Hi. Hello everybody. Welcome to uh, this live stream. I'm gonna paint a new portrait today. Okay, uh, here are the colors I have. I got here titanium white, cadmium orange, cadmium red, canoglidum rose, emerald green, raw umber, and ivory black. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, and you seen lately these bristle brushes? These are pretty cheap brushes. I got a set for like four dollars, five dollars. They are pretty nice, just to for the first stage. They say when I want uh, want to start blending, and I start using softer brushes. Okay, synthetic soft brushes. I'm gonna start just sketching. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna use just raw umber. And I'm gonna just work on the overall shape. Okay. Over shape, let's, let's see. I'm just holding a brush with my left hand, this on top of the photograph. Every time that I'm gonna just trace this, you know, line, I do this on the photograph. Uh, there are some angles, like to say, that are easy just to copy. But for example, for this one, I, I want to be more precise. And obviously, for the very core. Axis. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hello. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hello, Michael. Hello, Mana. Hello, Monique. Hello. I want to say next time paint Marilyn Monroe face. Okay. I will. I mean, not out of is, is next time, but yeah, you know what? I was just. <laughs> Seeing some Marilyn Monroe's pictures yesterday, and I was thinking, yeah, I should paint here. Obviously, she's beautiful. I was just checking Pinterest. Okay, I'm gonna just mix. Oops. I'm gonna mix uh, two values: one from the one for the shadow, one for the light. Okay, just the same cadmium orange with a little bit of, uh, cadmium, uh, sorry, raw umber with cadmium orange. A touch of kind of green rose. And this one is gonna be for the shadows. Okay, basically if I squint on my eyes, I see all this whole shape here. This dark. And then the hair. I'm gonna paint the hair a little bit with this. But I mean, I, I want just to paint this kind of transparent because I, I want I have to make it darker later. She has like a pretty dark brown hair. Let me see. What about the size of the face on my canvas? Things to be. Yeah, I'm gonna make it a bit, a bit smaller, a little bit up here. Yeah, I think that's gonna be better. Anyway, it's still, still big for my, my, for my, for my canvas. Let's see, one eye here, one eye, nose, mouth. Yeah, I think that's okay. Every time that I'm gonna place, you know, the features of the face, eyes, nose, I always measuring. Sometimes I do it visually, but you just keep some marks on the canvas. Remember, that's pretty, pretty important. 
uh, because when we start uh, painting more, painting more, we start losing the drawing. If we have some drawing at the beginning. Hello, Francesco. Hello, this trail pop. Hello, Dita. Hello, Ayuri A Paca. Hello, Maplog. Hello, Gabriela. Hello, Mikal D. I got, let's say the shadow, you know, the light is this color that I have on my canvas. I toned my canvas down with acrylic, just orange and blue. I mix orange and blue and I add a transparent layer. I mean, the original color is white. Okay, I like uh, the color of uh, the background. I just want to mix black and white. Have the same color. Okay, again, just black and white. color for the light in the face. I'm gonna mix orange, kind of green on rose, white, I'm gonna knock down this with raw umber. I will try to keep it simple, if you check out the colors, basically you just have orange, Kind of green and rose is pretty close to a different green zone. It's just basically just orange. When we mix, you mix both. It's a knockdown orange, reddish orange color. And raw umber and white, it just knocked down the color even more. Okay. And right now I'm just adding a thin layer, which is pretty close to the color of my on my canvas. I'm gonna add more raw umber and white. I'm gonna knock down this color a little bit more. You know, I think it's just too orangey, and uh, sometimes it's okay to paint the skin color kind of orangey, pinky. Sometimes we, we need a kind of a greenish skin color. We got this greenish skin color with raw umber and kind of orange kind of greenish, it's not green green, you know. I got uh, this green that I have here, it's a color that I used to use for a long time. And I just, I don't even remember, don't remember when I stopped using that color, but it was beautiful, it's a beautiful green. And I found a box with a couple of tubes Look at this, this is Winton. All the other colors are Rembrandt, this is Winton. That's the time when they have numbers. And even if it was like, this maybe, they got this tube maybe for like six or eight or 10 years ago. And I was like, oh my God, I found the box. And it's, you know, it's pretty good. It's kind of a little bit hard on the base, just a, just a bit. And it's been a long time since I used this color. Okay, let's put it here the neck. I used to use it for glazes or for the greenish areas on the skin. That was pretty nice, but it's been a long time. Uh, I'm kind of afraid of maybe just just too much of that color. Maybe it's not gonna be okay. Let's see. Uh, 
hello, hello, Ben. Hello, Mr. Herbs. Hello, Mario. Say Merry Christmas. Yay, yeah, Merry Christmas to you all. Okay. Hello, Edward. Let's see, I'm squinting. I just want to copy just darker values. Well, when I paint, I obviously uh, complain a lot with the photograph. Uh, and at the same time, I'm just trying to always, I don't even think about that much, but trying to remember where I gotta place shadows and lights, even that I, I see that on the picture, you know, I always think, for example, hey, don't forget that this area is a little bit darker, or don't forget that this, there is a little bit of a shadow, pretty subtle, you know, if I darken up the photograph, I'm gonna see that. But to be honest, I don't see that. Uh, just sometimes we don't, we don't see that on the photograph, you know. And at the same time, when I paint, for example, the eyebrow, I just remind me myself, hey, the eyebrow is darker here, it's lighter here. Okay. Kind of just. I see those things, but I always thinking on that. Okay, sometimes I got, we got distracted, you know, we cannot keep all that concentration all the time. But it's just like when you copy something, uh, but at the same time, when you when I draw, when I draw, I copy something, but at the same time, I rely on the things I know. And the only way to like take, check out the things I know is just like trying to mention those things to myself, like, for example, hey, don't forget that from the eyebrow to the nose is pretty close to the distance to the nose to the chin and I keep, keep track on on the drawing and I keep doing that from time to time okay I, I, mean, I mean sometimes I forget to do that and, you know it's because of practice I think and I kind of rely on, on observation a lot but it doesn't mean doesn't mean like it's just observation just the things that sometimes we don't know that we are doing but we've been doing that so many for so many years okay that they stay with us and even when we think that we are not doing those things like checking out or just having this voice in my head telling me hey don't forget to check out this don't forget to check out that don't forget this sharp edge for example here okay a uh, sharp edge on the nose and try to control it to make the nose you know pop things like like that Okay, a little more red here. Still thinking on values. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. Just thinking about values. This is darker. This is lighter, okay? A little bit more reddish here. Okay, she has a really, uh, he, uh, her cheekbone looks kind of big. That's why we see all this, you know, kind of swollen area. Which, I mean, for, for me, that kind of adds some beauty to, to her face. Hello, Carla B. Hello, Ki Ki Fai. Okay, just 
thinking, just one second, thinking, thinking about values. Okay, I need another brush. I just use raw umber. Just pure raw umber. You know, raw umber is kind of greenish, brown, brown greenish color. I got another, another raw umber here. This is from Winton. This one from Winton. This is from Rembrandt. It's more transparent. This one I could, I could use it here because it's kind of thicker. Yeah, you know, it's not that transparent. Look at that. down some here okay sometimes I just this for the face too but but when I want a greenish color on the face I can use this one this rubber from Rembrandt it's more to sprint okay. I got kind of the eye here the eyes, I know, but I get the feeling I gotta move it. Okay, I'm gonna just keep it there just for a second. Okay, let's see the other eye around here. Okay, I gotta check out the alignment of the eyes, the center line of the face, alignment between, for example, here the tear duct in the nose and the mouth, and here the same. Imagine that you trace a grid all over the face. I need a little bit of this one. It's darker. More brushes. You know that we have some reddish colors on the skin. I keep repeating that on every video. You know the nose, the cheeks, the, the chin, and the uh, eye, eyelids. Okay. Pick up a little bit of red. Just mix it here. Touch of white. Don't go down with the red or here, here. You can even make it kind of greenish. I mean, for a, for a guy, guy's face, greenish is pretty good. But even for a woman, woman face, it works, okay? It has to be a little bit subtle, you know? No, not like we're painting a guy where we can just make it pretty greenish. See, the upper lip is usually darker than the, than the, the lower lip. 
about how much detail I'm gonna add here. I'm gonna blend a bit, okay? that oh thank you so much Carly right I got 10 stars on, on Facebook thank you so much hello Raheen hello Eric hello Eridi Okay, let's continue with the hair. This is raw umber, but it's from Winton. That's why it's pretty dark. It looks even like black. Oh yeah, I mean, there's a difference between black, but even the screen, we don't see the difference. I, I see the difference here. If I place black next to this one, you know, but that's pretty close. This is not the raw umber from Rembrandt, okay? I just uh, pointing out that because maybe somebody's gonna use raw umber and you're gonna say, hey, that's not happening, you know, my raw umber is too transparent. The difference between brands and difference between, let's say, uh, you know, basically brands. And obviously, if you buy a uh, oil paint that is professional grade, that's gonna be different from a student grade. Now, I'm not gonna say that 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 what they mentioned here about transparency between raw umber and, and Winton is because of that. Because I have used really cheap oil paints, and sometimes I have seen some really transparent ones, really transparent on the cheaper brands okay and i'm not gonna say that that's happening because it's just cheaper but in this case for example if you find uh if you buy let's say a listening crimson and it's not transparent okay that's not good it has to be transparent you know maybe you buy a student grade it's not transparent that means that yeah you shouldn't use that well, we, what we want when we use a lizard crimson, or in this case, I have crinocridum rose, is the transparency. Is that we have a darker color, but even being that dark, is transparent. And that's the, the beauty about, uh, of a darker color. I'm blending a little bit, trying to Keep an eye on values. I'm gonna make this darker. I'm gonna use more raw umber with a little bit of kind of green rose. Mm, that's too reddish. I'm gonna use it here. I'm gonna clean my brush. I just need raw umber, just alone, pure raw umber. It's gonna get mixed here. I'm gonna get a kind of skin color in shadow, but kind of greenish. Yeah, just wipe off a little bit of this reddish here. Okay, I need more paint. 
for the lights because as you can see I see the face obviously I got shadows here on the face I squint on my eyes it's kind of close yeah there are still some differences obviously by just painting a kind of something you know imagine that you're painting from a photograph that's blurry that you don't see the tears and that's basically what, I, what I'm painting from because I keep my eyes squinted and what I see is basically a blurry photograph and it's pretty close to what I have here because I don't have the tears that makes things easy for me you know because if I just open my eyes and I see a lot of the tears it's kind of I see everything I see the eyes the nose the mouth it's everything just I started to see the eyelashes and I don't need that amount of information right now I'm not gonna use that that uh, that amount of visual information okay that's why I squint and everything becomes blurry and it's kind of close to what I have here pretty close let's see and I can compare now sometimes we, we you know remember to squint down your eyes or maybe pick up your cell phone and make the photograph darker or maybe you can make it blurry I don't know yeah? there's so many options when a simple cell phone the thing is that the point is that I want to see something closer to what I have here and what I have here is blurry there is no details here okay and I don't need to see that from the photograph that's why I repeat I keep squinting down my eyes okay yeah. hello Christine Paul look hello Frank Savalo hello Khalid, Khalid. hello Eri hello Tipu happy holidays too happy holidays to everybody Hello, uh, Shok. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Okay, let's see. Oh, I need this raw. Oh, no, no, just some black. Yeah, because black and cannot get on rose. I need a lot of contrast. On this area okay yeah okay I'm squinting yeah now that I got this darker value when I squint I see that it's even darker here okay. and darker here one spot two spots and the nose there and then the other eye the other, the other eye is dark enough I think it's just like uh, I see I'm not gonna use this black with raw I'm gonna use raw umber with a little crimson with kind of green rose. Okay, I see that this darker is going down to the nose, and then this shadow kind of is a bit lighter, almost nothing. Yeah, but where I see that's pretty dark is the eye, the eyebrow, and here. Just a little bit here. There. Okay. Now, I need my, my brush, another brush for applying the lights. I got, I love this bristle brush. Look at this one. Yeah, I love it for just to apply the, the, the lights. Because I got mid-tones, shadows. Yeah? I need the lights. I'm gonna just mix white and cadmium orange. Okay. It's kind of yellowish. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm gonna keep this, let's say, light yellowish. I almost, I mean, it's not that gel. It's not that it's that yellowish, yellowish. But obviously, when you mix white with cameo orange, you get something like that. I'm gonna just add another color here. Maybe a little bit of green, 
you know, for the people that keep watching my videos, you just know that usually on the lights I add a light green, a light blue. I'm just putting more paint and I think uh, the brush here helps me to lay down thicker paint that represented light on the face and keep squinting down my eyes okay now things that we gotta just check out always that uh, when you study to paint portraits one way to to know where to place the lights no i'm not speaking about what we see speaking about knowledge is to work with those sculptures that we see that is made of planes that kind of when we practice from from there we got just to to see where's the light where's the shadow light mid-tone shadow kind of the same when we start painting a real you know human face and with that a bit of knowledge of anatomy to know that be, below this rounded area there is a bone you know what we call the cheekbone that's the zygomatic bone that's why we're gonna see always this light on every human face here it doesn't matter how it change the light conditions but there's gonna be always light even on the shadow area there's gonna be a lighter area area there because there's there's a bump because of the psychomatic bond we we all have the that bond you know still squinting when i open my eyes i see what you all see you know kind of blurry yeah i'm just thinking hey you know look at the eye there's no no eye there when I squint on my eyes and compare both, I think, hey, that's pretty good. It looks closer to the photograph and values, and even the likeness is getting closer. Yeah? Okay. Hello, Gisela. Oh, welcome. Okay. Eric Whitson saying. Holidays in UK and in Spain now for the winter. Oh, that's pretty nice. That's pretty good. Yeah. Hello, Cherry Marie Art. Good morning. Okay. I continue. Remember that we can just pick up one color, like I'm using this one, and put it all over the face where we see the lights. Okay, well, what I, I try to do, for example, lay down less paint here, more paint here, because this is lighter. Okay, in that way, I'm counting that obviously I got wet paint all over my canvas, and I'm not just mixing on the palette, I'm mixing on the painting right now I'm mixing here yeah for the neck I can make it a little bit greenish let's see if this green works I think it's too much touch of camium orange make it more yellowish Another thing we can do is just clean the brush, wipe off the little bit of brush, and when what is left, we just paint. In that way, we don't have the same brightness, the same light all over the face. You know, we gotta, at some point we gotta think, hey, where's gonna be the lightest light on the face? And that for that lightest light, I usually use green. Let me use this green here, white and green. That usually create contrast, light blue too, light violet, create contrast because the face is, is warm, is orangey. We play, when we place this, let me get really close here. Okay. 
wait to zoom in okay this color it glows on an environment that is warm it's orangey this because it's just it's green it's opposite color of uh, in a warmer color okay and we can I can just put it here too the idea is not to kind of put uh, this color to make this color replace the other one is to use to keep all of them just living living on the face obviously it's more easy when you got some kind of brushy painterly approach to place more colors when you planning to smooth out the surface a lot you know that's gonna be uh you're gonna be more subtle about laying down more color varieties on the face because they're make, gonna make it look like stains you know, I don't know, we gotta be more careful okay, <clears throat> I got the background, I think it's too light I like it, you know, but let me see obviously the background on the photograph is darker uh, hold on mm. okay, I'm gonna blend a little bit keep squinting down my eyes because I keep comparing every time let's see if I got some questions Hola Bolson, Bolson, dice, no entiendo nada, pero veo tu proceso. Bo, Bols, Blossom, Blossom, sorry, saying, I don't understand anything by it, uh, you know. At the same time, he's saying that kind of understand something just by watching the process. Do you start base painting with acrylic or oils? Love to watch you paint. Thank you, and, and Casey, Casey, and... The, the, you mean about the base, the base color my canvas is acrylic it just that, but it was just a base color for the canvas you know uh, I started this painting now I mean, it's not like um, I started this with acrylics and now I add in oil paints on top no, I started this and like what, an hour, an hour ago? 40 minutes ago I have done that, not 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 on, on a live stream, but I have done that uh, a few times when I want to paint faster. I don't want to wait for the first layer to to dry, like you know, in a week. Sometimes even more, depending on how much paint we we, we use. I have painted with acrylics, and then I. Uh, the next day or sometimes even the same day I start painting with oils okay but when I have done that my the first layer with acrylics is pretty rough uh, and it's pretty blurry because I, the, the thing about acrylics is that we, ha we got a lot of sharp edges and it's kind of difficult if you have a lot of sharp edges at the beginning and the first layer to kind of get rid of them with more paint they're gonna kind of show through the layers okay and and definitely that affects a lot on the result yeah i mean if you have sharp edges everywhere uh, i mean th that's something that we don't want we don't want that for nothing we're gonna balance, you know, between soft and sharp edges. We don't, we don't, we don't want sharp edges everywhere. Oh, a little bit of light blue. I can get light blue just by mix, mixing black and white. A grayish, you know, light blue. For the eye. Oh, let's see.
this is light green emerald green today I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use my latest latest five favorite color chrome green I'm gonna use this emerald green I'm squinting oh I'm squint and I don't see this darker spot here Now I squint, and now I see it, that's good. No, no, you see what I'm doing, you know, it's not about precision, about laying down this brush stroke with this wrinkle here. It's about squinting down my eyes and see that. Okay. So remember that we don't create a, a painting with lines, it's values that moves from being lighter sh mid-tones and shadows but the thing is that we start the painting with lines when we start with a really tight you know drawing okay uh, let's see again I'm squinting down again and I see something different here I'm gonna clean the brush just so I wanna wipe off with uh, just a paper towel Okay, again, I'm squinting down again, and I see that this is darker. All this kind of dark, dark. Okay, okay that's closer. Yeah, I need another brush. This one. No, squinting. I see a little bit of light here. Okay, that's not enough. A little bit lighter. I'm not gonna do anything yet. Uh, I mean, like correcting that light that just uh, applied there. I just thought that thing. I think it's just too light, but I gotta wait. Okay. Okay. What about the contour of the face? Uh, I'm thinking that maybe it's a good idea to see more. Of the contour of the face I could see just by making this darker like the background on the photograph darker okay which is I mean I'm not gonna show it's not gonna show the edge or I can make it a little bit lighter here and create a sharp edge here Okay, this I can make the face pop because I'm creating contrast. This is gonna pop. This is gonna kind of fade. On the photograph, all the shadow fades on on the background. In okay, my painting, I can change that. eye looks too big eh? it looks like I, I gotta move this eye a little bit up I'm uh, not so sure yet the more I paint the more I start to see my mistakes Now, uh, remember that it's kind of, let's say, a value blocking stage at the beginning. It's like when you we block in the drawing, it's the same at the beginning with values. Even that, like, like what you see here, like it's kind of blurry, I see the face, you know. And I'm happy with the painting. I, I'm, I'm more happy with the painting when I keep just seeing my, with my eyes squinted because I... I I see a lot of similar things. When I open my eyes, obviously I see that my, my painting is blurry. And maybe I'm gonna keep it like that, I don't know. Okay, 
keep squinting I see light here okay keep squinting there yeah. little bit of green with a touch of orange okay I'm gonna add a little bit of light here okay okay uh, don't remember that you paint one area and you gotta check out all the rest you don't want this light to compete with this light here okay we don't want that Oh, the neck is too thick, eh? Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of black. Just black. Here, pure black. Anyway, I don't like, uh, I need more shadow on the neck. I don't like it, you know, it looks kind of flat. More shadow. Okay. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Blending. I need more light here, but not yet. I mean, I see a few things that obviously I need to just fix. I need to make some corrections. eyebrow there <coughs> oh, highlight that was beautiful it was it was beautiful I need to paint that again. Oh, for new people here, you know, I got, I have a Patreon account. And for this month, I, I got, uh, I got, I got some tiers, you know, the tier is like, a, the lower tier is, it's free for a week. Somebody wants to join, just look at the link. Okay. Oh, oh. hello, Kathy Fleming from Pennsylvania. Hello, Astri. Carla B is asking, asking me, wondering if you have on, online lessons. Yeah, on Patreon. Uh, just the link on the description. Or oh, if I miss the link, you get into Patreon, you place, you know, you see the link, uh, the name, my name there. You get there and uh, just sign up. You're going to get access to at least 100 videos. I mean, that's the lower tier. That's the tier that we paint Saturdays. OK. 
Okay. And with Saturdays, we paint still lives, uh, landscapes, animals, flowers. That's free for a week. And we paint one Saturday with oils, the next Saturday with acrylics. And I think there are more than uh, like uh, 100 videos, maybe even more, maybe 150 videos. Uh, to be honest, I didn't count them. We just paint every Saturday for, we've been painting every Saturday for the last three years or two years. But the thing is that's free for a week. And if from there you can move on to the next tier where you got access to more videos. And, from, and then from there you move up to the drawing tier. We draw every Thursday. You know. But basically all the things I do are just uh, live, live, paint alone, draw alone, sessions, lessons. Sorry, you know, I'm speaking and painting, and sometimes I just I need to pay more attention to the painting. And that's why sometimes I got lost on my thoughts, and sometimes something that happens to me a few times is I pick up white and I say I'm gonna pick up black. If that happens, you know, you know that my brain is just thinking about the painting, and I lost the synchronization between my mouth and, and, and my brushes. Yeah. The thing is that's free. Okay, I'm gonna keep it there free for maybe one, one more week. Or maybe more, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not so good selling. I should say it's free just for today. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like when I go to a store to buy something and, you know, art stores is, are not like that. But I don't know where, I, where when I went to an art store like a, a month ago and there was a young, you know, lady there. And she was like, hey, I got this sale, but just for today, and said, what? Just, oh, wow, what, I mean, that's, <laughs> wow, just for today. I think because she was pretty young, she was trying to apply marketing things, you know, too. But in art, kind of doesn't work. Maybe for other products. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, here, here in my country, in Peru. But that was funny because she was trying to wake up this urgency thing that when we go to buy something, that's a sale, and this should not be for, you know, this. It's done in the next couple of hours. Yeah, I should do something like that, you know, it's like, hey, you got a free trial just for the time that I'm painting live here. As soon as I finish up, I go to my patron and there's no free trial to the next time that I start painting live. Wow, that would be pretty good. What do you think? That's the way to sell, to sell things, eh? <laughs> I don't think that works for art, but I don't know. I don't know. What do I know about saying? Okay, I need a bigger brush. I want to blend a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Carly is asking me, oh, hello, Torici from Spain. Carla B is saying, how does it work, patron? I don't know anything about that, but definitely I will check it. 
Oh, you, uh, Patreon is basically uh, that's a let's say a website, a website that you you sign up, and it has a different artists. It's basically for artists all over the world. Different things, you know, not just for art, you know, but let's say that for to support the people that you love. Or you, 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 I mean, the things that support people. That was, I think, that was the, the, the how it was created. But the thing is that, at the same time, for supporting people, you got things for a really, really low price. Okay, and you get into Patreon, sign up. Uh, uh, in the case of my Patreon, you're gonna see four options, four, four members memberships. The first one is four dollars. Next one nine. Next one fifteen, and next one one hundred dollars. I mean, the top, the one hundred dollars, you got access to all the other ones, and we paint every Sunday for four or five hours a portrait. Okay, the thing is that you get access and you can join the live paint alone lessons on Saturdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, depending on the tier you choose, the membership membership you choose. Or you can just watch a lot of recorded, you know, sessions. Yeah, basically that, you know, it's kind of, kind of simple, I think. You know, Bruce Bowley, Bowley is saying, I'm almost 55 and you helped me to decide to try painting soon. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Fidi is saying, what brushes do you use? I'm using just, now I use, this is a synthetic brush. The brand says Bianjo. B-I-A-Y, no, N-Y-O. Bianjo, but, yeah. I think, uh, I don't want to say those, these brushes are special, these are round brushes. But, or, you know, this is just frayed out. Look at that. It's pretty, pretty careful when they got to this stage after a lot of use because I used them for, for blending. Uh. Oh, thank you, Michael, for asking. Yeah, it was a nice uh, Christmas. It was just kind of, you know, well, uh, Quiet, let's say. Yeah, I don't do anything, no, not, not too much on Christmas. It was more, was like more Christmas, Christmas when my my kids were kids, <laughs> my son and my daughter. You know, my, my daughter is 20 and my son is almost 18. Yeah. When they were kids, that was like, hey, Christmas, it was, you know, for everybody was excited about Christmas, about buying gifts, gifts. But now it's, no, no, I mean, we just basically eat at midnight, almost midnight, turkey or chicken or pork, you know, eat together on the main table of the house. And we laugh, we enjoy family at that time, and basically then go go to sleep. Yeah. And my son, who's the one who keeps, you know, teasing me, like, hey, dad, you didn't buy me anything. And I say, what? I bought you just one thing. No, 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 that doesn't count. Speaking about Christmas. I say, oh, my God. You're almost, he's almost 18. And he keeps asking me for gifts. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 for me, it's pretty nice, you know. Yeah. Okay. I'm adding the lights again, as you see. And with this brush, I lay down the, 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 the lights with the bristle brush. Okay, let's see. 
I'm gonna start adding some sharp edges here and there to get some definition. But I want I want the softness here, okay? That's what I want, softness first. I don't want any sharp edge. Softness, and now I'm gonna start adding in some areas just some sharp edges and try to balance things out between you know a, a sharp edge is going to make things just pop now you choose where to do it for example uh, obviously things that are obvious are the eyes you know areas okay let me see I need to zoom in my uh, the, the picture, the photograph here. Okay. Oh, Astri Meat is saying I warmly recommend to paint along with Renzo and get his comments and views to your own painting. Oh, that's something that happens on the Patreon. I critique every painting, you know, like at least twice. I think more than twice. I critique and I just point out mistakes, point out things that you should, somebody maybe should practice in order to improve. Okay. Okay, I need another brush here, a little bit of pink. Soften here. Okay, let's say that this. Uh, I mean, this is a sharp edge for sure. No, no. Let's say this is a sharp edge. And I don't know if I'm gonna move it. Maybe a little bit up or down. But when something is soft, you see this definitely drive the attention to that area. Okay. The intention of this is make things pop and obviously create volume if i add I'm adding more light now just holy okay okay light and sharp edge has the intention to make this round now I'm not, I'm not gonna keep that sharp edge all around the eye, okay? I see that, yeah, maybe you could see that, but we need to soften this. That's, why, that's when, for example, I, I choose to, for example, here, in the shadow, here. Okay, paint this, you know, I see that, we will see that. And then I just make it blurry. It's there, but it's so soft, but it's there, okay? It's in shadow, it's not like, uh, it's not competing, it's just leaving the eye pop in this portion here. Okay, another thing that ha could happen when we paint, yeah, maybe we want I mean, we got we got so many options here, but I can just choose to make the eye sharp, like that. Let's see. Now I have two sharp edges, or I could choose to soften this, make it soft, soft, soft. Okay, we see the eye in shadow, but we still see the upper eyelid just coming forward. Okay. No, this is the tricky part because we gotta choose what to do. One way uh, here, make it sharper or less sharper or really blurry. Okay, let's move to the other eye. Here, I can just keep this eye even, even more blurry, you know. It's in shadow, we don't need details here. 
Check out Rembrandt's paintings. That's a good example about how Rembrandt painted things on shadow that we see that is there, but when you double check, there's nothing there. There's no details. Okay, I'm not saying they're gonna do that because obviously I should live, you know, a couple of lives to paint as Rembrandt did, but we try, at least we try. We always, we always try, you know, paint a little bit as the painters we admire. In this case, we all admire, you know, the masters like Rembrandt, Sargent, Velasquez. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight that I see around here. Okay, I'm gonna keep it like that for now. I'm not done. Okay, I'm not done. We gotta just check out, go back and forth here and there, and never stay that much. And everything stay that much in one area to the point that we're gonna say I'm done here. No, I mean the face is everything. It's not just finish up this portion like like wow. It's just. When, when we do that, usually we we uh, we stay step back, and then we realize that we got one eye bigger than the other, and then we have we got uh, a lot of time wasted, and then we gotta just work again. Okay, let's um, move to the nose. I got a nose, it's pretty soft, trying to keep it soft. Now let's think about edges again. Just one second, I need to find my brush. Where's my brush? I was using a brush, no? I need to go, oh here it is. No, no, it's not. Okay. Thank you, Gis G. Hello, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Senor Rodriguez is asking me when would you paint with acrylics again? Oh yeah, I have to do that. I gotta paint with acrylics again. Uh, if Ina is saying your facial expressions are always so accurate, amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, hello, Sylvia. Into the darkness, saying thank you for your videos. Have learned a lot from your process. Personally, I love your technique for La Prima without any medium or solvent. It feels very natural. Thank you. Oh, thank you, you all. Yeah. It's been a nice year just having you all watching me painting here. Oops, I clean this brush. It's been pretty nice for me. I, I've been painting a lot this year. I've been trying, you know, trying to be in life one, at least once a week. I hope we can just we can keep doing this next year. And next year and next year. Did you get bored of me watching me painting here? Or I got bored of you? <laughs> That's not gonna happen. I'm trying to have a sharp edge there, okay? Everything here is blurry. Soft and blurry. Now I move to the mouth. 
I just, you know, I'm just going over things that happened when I was making the live streams. And I've been just, uh, it's been pretty nice. Just I remember a couple of times I got a couple of haters, you know, but that was pretty nice. I, I, even that was, you know, kind of spicy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm missing that. <laughs> Why well, said that? I don't know. No, I didn't. Yeah. We don't miss people that hate us. Yeah. But it's not like I mean, it's not like they hate us. You know, it's not. It's just like they don't like the things that we do, but they don't like them to the point that they cannot hold it and they have to say it, say it out loud. Yeah. But the funny thing that I have seen haters in different channels, you know, I never thought seen people that hate art art is just you know I don't know I mean it's art okay let's see okay let's look for more sharp edges here and there on the face. But you gotta keep an eye and keep softness. Always try to keep softness. Something something that we struggle a lot when we paint with acrylics. Because you know that I got a, I have a acrylic channel but I haven't painted in that channel for for a little bit. I thought it was a good idea to separate the acrylics from all your paints. I think it wasn't a good idea. It's gonna be kind of difficult to keep a couple of channels. I mean I got three. Sylvie, do you prefer soft pencils or soft pastels or oil pastels? Uh, speaking about pastels, I think I prefer just soft pastels. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the ones that I got, let's say, soft and medium, some pencils. And when I have painted with pastels, that's the ones that I try the most. And, uh, oh, that's another thing that I have to do. Next year, next year, I promise. I gotta paint with pastels.
this eyelashes a little bit up. This too. Sometimes when I do this with the brush, it's just, just like cleaning the brush on my canvas. <coughs> I should do that on a <coughs> paper towel. We've seen some days ago I used Carbotelo. Those are the ones I have. <coughs> I'm sorry. Hello, Nolan. Yeah, Happy New Year, too. Mm. <sighs> Hello, Anna Grutzin from Palan. What color is this dark brown? It's raw, uh, yeah, it's raw umber. This one is raw umber. Yeah, the last one is ivory black. <coughs> Sorry. For the eyes, it's uh, yeah. A raw umber with Alison Crimson. <coughs> Hmm. Sorry. <clears throat> there a little bit of a sharp edge there just to make it pop. Just there, just a bit. Check out uh, here. an accent. I'm gonna add an accent, a little bit dark, just there. Nostrils. But the mouth, I need, I need to make this darker. <coughs> I don't know what happened. <coughs> I need to drink some water. Yeah.
Okay, Miss Quentin. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I need some light on the upper lip here. I need to make the mouth a bit darker. Here. I don't wanna. I don't. I'm not gonna paint any detail here. I just make it darker. Okay. I squint. Yeah. I think that's dark enough. What about the edge of the face, the contour? Mm. Okay, a bit of green and white. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I keep it soft here. Maybe I should keep this soft too. Soft, soft. Just lay down one tiny brush stroke here. Just there, okay. Okay, now uh, green and raw umber and let me let me see okay here. I have here a sharp edge, just that little bit. Okay. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough. And I can keep it soft here, soft. <laughs> okay, I see a reflected light below the nose here. Okay, let's paint it. If, if I don't like it, I'm gonna just even that this here. I'm just going to soften that. The same here, a little bit of light, reflected light. 
perfect the light here. Okay, what about a uh, sharp edge here? Mm -hmm. okay, a little bit of light, the lower I lit. Light on the sclera. She has brown eyes now that I see it. I thought she had black eyes. I'm working just with liner brushes. I got three here. I try to keep one for lighter colors, the other one for darker. And sometimes I misconfuse them, but I try, I try. I switch to this for darker colors. Another one, like let's say for mid-tones. I mean, it's kind of difficult to be that uh, that organized with the brushes, but I try. You know, I try. I, I, obviously, at some point, I find myself painting with a brush that I was planning to use for just lighter colors, and I use it for darker colors. That happens, you know. But we try. We try every time. We should try every time just to keep an order, uh, especially when we paint a La Prima because we're going to save time. But when I paint here, just something that I'm painting, you know, uh, just something that I'm painting here. I remember even once I was just painting a huge, I started a huge painting just with one brush, you know. I was just keeping wiping off the brush. Painting, wipe off the brush, and continue, continue, continue.
Hello Muki, not long since I heard this the other day and I thought I would share. In life a road cuts through the landscape, but in art the lines depicting the road cuts through the painting. Okay, okay. I need to translate that. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Deep. <laughs> Vintage is asking me what brush do you use? Show me, please. Yeah, I, 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 this is just bristle brushes. I got this synthetic brush, soft. When it's new, it's rounded, pointy. And this just flat brush, bristle brush. You know, this is just the cheaper one that you can find. Uh, that's, that's just that. Uh, the only difference that I got why I started to use these brushes because I saw, you know, they're pretty cheap, but they have long hair. And I thought, oh, well, you know, it, that because they have long hair, it makes this brush that usually is stiff kind of flexible because of the long hair. And I like it. I like that. And that's what I use. The other thing that I like about this, about this one that I use for applying lights, is the look at the hair. You know, it's not, it's not pretty nice. It's not a brush that we think, oh, that's you know, but that's perfect for to create some texture, like for example here. It's pretty good for that. Okay, if somebody loves that texture. Okay, it's pretty nice. I'm gonna zoom in. Wait, please. Okay, now look at that. Yeah. Obviously, uh, kind of blending here with this. Yeah. Uh, and another thing that happens is that we can add a little paint with these brushes, you know. But it's up to anyone. Uh, when we add more and more paint, we can just lose control on values and more things. Uh, I could say that take easy about about adding a lot of paint where somebody is still, is still in the process of controlling values, ages, you know, and when you are just good on ages and values, especially values, you know, ages are pretty important, but if the values are not okay, the ages are not gonna help up that much. Ages is something that helps when the values are, are good. And it goes like a step by step. Okay, when the drawing is good, next step, values. When the values are good, next step, color. And at the end, edges helps. Okay, but uh, that, I don't know if, uh, the last stage about edges, it could be optional, but it depends. If somebody maybe wants to paint really like a photograph in that case. You know, it's about copying the photograph. But when we try to kind of copy the illusion of something real, yeah, we gotta work with edges always. And we need a lot, a lot of soft and loose, lost edges. Always, always. Okay. The other day, somebody asked me how uh, why my painting look kind of cartoonish, and that's because of ages. Okay, that's just because of that. Now the thing is that, and uh, and somebody asked me kind of the same question, but why we got that effect with acrylics? Yeah, with acrylics is kind of a characteristic of acrylics to have sharp edges because they dry fast. We don't have time for blending, and when we pursuing some realism on the painting, you know, we it's pretty common to see that we're gonna have really sharp edges, 
Why? Because we think that, they, uh, that we need a lot of deterrents, and deterrents are sharp. Deterrents are just, we see deterrents. You know, that's why I mentioned at the beginning, hey, when I start painting, what I, what I do? I squint. What happens when you squint down your eyes? You remove the terrace. We, you don't see anything. anything is, everything is blurry. And that's perfect because everything is blurry in my painting too. And that makes things easy to copy. But at some point, we want the terrace. So then we move slowly on, into the terrace. Okay? And that's, that's the tricky part because we need to control when to stop adding the terrace. Sometimes we don't stop and the painting look cartoonish. And I gotta say that's pretty common. Why? Because we love the terrace. We all love the terrace. Okay? That's something that we cannot resist. And obviously, the more the terrace we add, the painting is gonna look more cartoonish. Okay? If we don't control that, you know, we don't do more things to the painting, but if somebody choose to do that, like adding a lot of details, I would say, you know, like go all the way to make the painting like a photograph. Because I think that's, that, that would be the, the goal when you do the, add details and details and details. But if somebody's practicing, for example, you know, uh, we, you gotta practice just following any teacher instruction instructional teacher that's gonna tell you what squint down your eyes when somebody's telling you that is telling you hey no details for you okay that means that we basically working on something that's blurry that doesn't we don't see clearly but that's what we need at the beginning because a painting is that at the beginning at the beginning stage Every painting is just that, it's something blurry. It's something that has no form. It's just, it's growing slowly. We're building up the form and the terrace slowly on the painting. <clears throat> uh, oh, GG, hello Ali. Uh, GG is asking, I do paint with acrylics and my paintings always look cartoonish. Oh, that, uh, okay, that was your question then, then, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's the reason. Eh? And with, for acrylics, we need to control from the very beginning uh, edges. Okay, we need to. Uh, half always at hand a brush for for blending before it dries on working on a more more painterly style where we see brush strokes that kind of you know with that definitely we don't have uh, sharp edges because everything is kind of uh, like building a puzzle of smaller pieces that one piece next to each other and the pieces are just pretty close together in values that creates a transition, a soft transition without having soft, uh, a soft blending. But for so many smaller pieces that have the same value, we create a soft transition. Okay, for example, this painting, I gotta stop at some point that that's gonna be enough. But if I continue, what what happens is that we continue adding more details, more and more details. And more details means more sharp edges. And when do I stop? Okay. okay. Every brush stroke is just showing more, more and more details. And that's sometimes a question that when, when, when I stop painting, because it's like we, we don't know, and that's a, a difficult question because we don't know. We can just paint, continue painting for adding the terrace, or continue painting for, let's say, destroying the terrace and trying to balance things out between edges, between values, or no composition. 
No composition that like uh, thinking that the face and that more objects are, or, you know, sharing the space with the portrait on the canvas because composition is basically a distrib distribution of, you know, of all the things that exist on this canvas. But composition, when we speak about a portrait, is basic, basically how the harmony between the eyes, nose, and mouth is working, how you create the illusion that something is coming forward and something is receding. How is that on the, the face? It's like, imagine you're painting still life, so many objects, and all of them looks like they're coming forward. Looks like this, they have, even that you see them, that the one is behind the other on the painting, looks like they all just fighting to just pop. That's the same, kind of the same, when we, we're speaking about composition on the portrait. We gotta think about the whole face. And when, when, for example, I stay here and, and, and I kill this age, I soften that and thinking about composition. You know, this is not just, this, this is not affecting just this. This is affecting the light here, affecting how the, the eye look here. Because the more soft I do, I do this, the more sharp look what is closer to that, in this case, the eyebrow. <coughs> Okay, and then, <clears throat> sorry. Okay. What else? No, I think I'm almost done. Um, I, I, I want to paint a little bit of the hair. I see a lot of things to paint, but I don't think that. I want something kind of sketchy, soft. I don't want to get into, again, adding more details and stay, stay like a couple of hours and, and then even finish up the painting and thinking that I got I to gotta paint, put more time because, you know, I have to see more and more things done. Okay, uh, again, uh, let's see, let's think about values. Darker, darker, I uh, have black, pure black here with a listening crimson. I'm gonna paint again here. The same that happens with the lights, when we paint lights and then we paint it and then we see it and they look kind of pale again. The same happens with darker, darker shadows. That's why when I paint something really dark, like pure black, I usually gotta go back to that area and paint again, a thicker paint. And then uh, after two layers at least, then it shows the real value. I see the real value, the real, really darker, darker value. And the same that happens with the highlight, that it has to be thicker, the same happens with the shadow. Otherwise, we don't have uh, all the contrast when we miss some values. Sometimes we wanna miss uh, on purpose, you know, some values that we don't want a really sharp, sharp black. Yeah. Sometimes we want to just, okay, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit of this color, I like it. Okay. Going back to what I was speaking basically about values and when it's about values, always keep this with you. And remember that you need this one, the, the, you need both, the lighter one and the darker one on your painting. And remember the darker one, that's gonna be always the difficult one. That's gonna be the one that, because we are just afraid of getting the painting just muddy. We usually don't paint those darker, darker values. Okay, we gotta remember that. We gotta remember, we gotta paint and then we gotta just then we gotta love them. All the shadows. Okay, some eyelashes. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit darker here.
I said sorry because I went to do something. Okay, let's see. bit of light for the hair. My film brush works pretty good. Uh, this brush is, you know, kind of becomes closer to what a frame a film brush looks like. darker below I'm gonna just make it lighter okay see a little bit of hair there but I'm just gonna make it lighter let me see if that works if that works make it the face you know kind of frame the face here in here and make the face pop. I think I think it's good. Okay, Tetiana is asking me what medium do you use? Oh, I'm not using any medium. Just oil paint directly from the tube. Hey, don't forget to press the like button, everybody. Please. Thank you, Michael. Hello, Ali. Let me see, let me just step back.
Okay, let's see the drawing. Drawing is okay. Uh, let's see eyebrows. Maybe I need to make it this a little bit darker. darker here too. I think I got the expression maybe a bit darker here. I'm squinting and I don't s I see that some value is missing there. A darker value. Okay. Same here, the same here. Maybe I should make this a little bit sharp, one edge a little bit sharp. Just here. think it's gonna work anyway I need to see it I need to see if, if a little bit yeah oh no 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 I'm gonna make it soft I think I'm almost done. Okay. And right now I'm just thinking about the, uh, the color. So we're adding some touch. Uh, that's why I added some touches here, for example, a little bit of pink. I see the on the photograph here is a little bit orangey. Uh, and here it's a little bit orangey too, but uh, another thing that I see in the photograph that this shadow is darker but I just want to keep it like that so I just I don't want to make it that sharp okay
Okay, I think that's enough. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's enough. Oh, GT is asking me, where are you from? I'm from Peru, South America. Oh, Evil Drawing is saying, I was looking at your videos. The Michelle Pfeiffer painting was so educational. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Glad you like it. Glad it was helpful. Okay, I think that's it. You know, I could continue painting, but... I'm afraid just to to lose, you know, the softness I, uh, that I have here. And uh, and because this is what I want, if I continue painting, I could be like adding details and then soften the details and just moving like that, you know, painting something and then softening again, painting again and then softening again. Yeah. I think with this is enough. We see the face. I got the volume. Proportions are okay. I think maybe something is soft. That usually happens. Yeah, about color. Yeah, I got some. Uh, I mean, color is some color is something that we can just continue putting on top. You know, like some, I got some kind of violet here. That would be nice for the shadow. Some touches, some touch ups. Okay, the green, that was nice, this touch of green. Okay. Some touches too. Okay. Okay, I think that's it for today. Please don't forget to press the like button and see you next week. Let's see next week. Okay. No, I think next week I'm gonna be just maybe resting, sleeping. <laughs> yeah, you see, never finished. Only abandoned, abandoned it. <laughs> hello, Ravi. Hello, Das. Did they say I don't like green? <laughs> yeah. Just some touches. You know, they don't look that. Uh, you know, if you don't look for those colors. You don't. We don't see those colors. Something nice about those colors. Just uh, some touches. Just touches. Okay. See a little bit of pink, a little bit of green. You know. Obviously, the idea is just to keep them from a distance, to see them soft. You know, if we see that there's a touch of green there, you know, that would be that would be too much. Okay, that would be too too harsh for the painting. Okay, I wish you all a happy. New year. I wish you all the best for this new year. And I would love to see you all next week or next time that I go live. And you know, you all got the op option there to get to my Patreon and try it for free for one week. Okay. And thank you so much to all my patrons. You know, I got a, a gift for all my patrons, which I, I appreciate so much. Okay, because it was some money. It was money. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not kidding. It was money. And I, I thank you, you all, so much. Uh, see here, my Monique. I mean, uh, you. Uh, you, you, you all, 
if I start mentioning names, I mean Monique, Nikki, that Gary, Kerr, I'm gonna miss Miguel, I'm gonna miss some names, you know. Sorry, sorry. But thank you all so much. Okay. I really appreciate the the gift. And hope you all join, you know, happy new year. And wish you all the best for 2024. Thank you so much, everybody. And see you all next year. That'll be in a week. <laughs> okay. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I'm going to read some comments. Yeah. Everybody saying Happy New Year. Uh, thank you, thank you. Happy New Year to everybody. Yeah. Okay, bye everybody. Yeah. Oh, Gisela is saying thank you, happy new year, trying the free week now on Patreon. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Bye everybody. <laughs>